everybody i hope all is well we are seeing so many birds in our backyard and recently a whole family of blue jays i think there are five or six of them decided to come and check out our nut feeders so they arrive between 6 and 6 30 in the morning so we've actually stopped using our alarm clock because these guys are so chatty and they make so much noise they wake up the whole household I've been meaning to talk to you about uh, the new feature that the Merlin Bird ID app, the sound ID. I absolutely love Merlin, right? And then I got distracted because I heard a gray catbird somewhere around here. So I ran inside and I grabbed grapes. Gray catbirds absolutely love fruit. They love grapes, apples, oranges. They were in our blueberry bushes for weeks before. But recently, sort of in the past three weeks, I just haven't seen them. So I got really excited and I want them to stick around until it's time for them to migrate. So the bird was found somewhere here. This is the wild patch that we leave in our backyard. This is where we have our uh, brush pile going. So I'm just going to leave the grapes there to attract them and to make them feel more comfortable. So if you haven't heard yet, Merlin Bird ID app just added a new feature, this sound ID, very exciting. So if you can't see the bird in your backyard or anywhere on your walk, you can use this now to identify what kind of bird is making that call or is singing that song. Let's actually go and see if we can test it. Check this out. It got the gray catbird. This is amazing. So go and try it out. It's really simple to use. You just download it as part of your Merlin Bird Idea pack and hold it out like this, press record and Bob's your uncle. Brian Lumley has seen uh, robins and red-winged blackbirds helping themselves to steel cut oats at his feeders. So he's wondering if, whether this is suitable because they keep coming back for more. So you've got robins and red-winged blackbirds enjoying steel cut rolled oats in your feeder and you want to know if this food is any good for them. You know, I haven't really heard of very many folks offering this kind of oat to backyard birds here in North America. However, it turns out that pinhead oats, or Irish or Scottish oats, other names for steel-cut oats, can be found in many seed mixes in the UK. Highly nutritious, they provide lots of vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, and contain fat and carbohydrates, and thus constitute a great food for soft-billed birds, such as the blackbird, a very common thrush which is related to our robin here in North America, and not our blackbirds, and their robin, which is not at all like our robin, but instead is a type of chat thrush. In any case, it does not surprise me that our robins and blackbirds like this food too, which is a good thing because it offers yet another alternative to our backyard birds diet. While it hasn't been a common food item for backyard birds in North America, at least not yet, folks often feed steel cut oats to chickens in both commercial and free range backyard operations. Just one word of caution though, before you go chucking out handfuls of these oats on the ground for birds that like to feed down there, know that mice also love this food. So either offer these oats in feeders that don't make the oats accessible to mice or mix it in with your suet. Between a young dog and uh, two active boys who basically decided that everything outside is their playground, I find myself doing a lot of laundry. Well, I guess I don't have to worry about waiting to have a full load, so that way we don't waste any water. But having grown up with no dryers in the household and always looking for ways to reduce our energy consumption, I really pay attention to how often we use our dryer. So during warmer months, I try to bring our laundry outside. Doesn't always happen, unfortunately. The weather doesn't cooperate all the time. And this year I decided to calculate how many times I use a dryer versus bringing laundry and drying it outside. So basically on average per every 10 loads of laundry, I managed to dry seven, eight loads 
outside. All right. So my question is, how about you? Do you have a clothesline? How often do you give your dryer a break? Ask any mathematician and they'll tell you that the discovery of zero as a numerical value in a number system was one of the most amazing discoveries in the field. It apparently really transformed the science of mathematics. This highly abstract concept of none or nothingness was actually fully accepted by humans as far back as the 5th century AD, or maybe even earlier. More recently, bees and monkeys have joined our human ranks as being able to understand the zero concept. But even more exciting to ornithologists like me, it's been proven that crows, very likely all corvids, actually know what zero means. You see, the special thing about this particular value is it doesn't fit into any kind of routine for counting real objects. In other words, if I look at three or four objects clustered together on a table, I can count them as one, two, three, or four, depending on how many there are. But when there's nothing there to count, I can conclude that the number of objects sitting on the table is zero. Andreas Nieder, a professor of animal physiology at the Institute of Neurobiology at the University of Tübingen in Germany, and colleagues, set up a computer game for some captive carrion crows. Each crow was presented with two displays, each containing dots ranging from zero to four. The crows were trained to identify when both displays match one another. At the same time, the bird's neural activity was monitored. When the two screens displayed zero dots, the neurons in the cognitive part of the brains of these birds lit up, indicating that they actually understood the concept of zero. And that, my friends, is much ado about nothing in the bird world. Along with fine cuisine and delicious wines, believe it or not, France has a long history of rather inhumane uh, bird trapping, which includes using nets and glue. Annually, an estimated 150,000 birds die from non-selective bird trapping. But in June, uh, trapping with glue was finally banned after years of public outcry from conservation groups. And now trapping with nets has been deemed rather unnecessary and cruel. All these changes are taking place because of the new EU directive that has now outlawed any kind of bird trapping regardless of the species or the habitat. The directive is of course being contested by the National Hunting Association which states that these practices have been around for centuries and don't actually pose any threat to the general health of the birds. But at the same time, with the bird populations being in such steep decline, perhaps it's time to revisit and reconsider old bird hunting and trapping techniques, even though they've been around for centuries. And fabulous news for the birds that either live in Illinois or decide to migrate through Illinois. The state of Illinois has just adopted that Bird Safe Building Act, which requires all new construction of government buildings to use bird safe materials, which includes anti reflective glass and also requires the reduction of the glass that's being used in the building, depending on how many stories there are. There is also a requirement on how how lighting fixtures should be placed. They should either be indirect or shielded so that bright lights doesn't disorient migratory birds. This initiative is of course coming from the government, so hopefully this will make it easier for the private sector to adopt it as well. And soon using bird safe materials will become the norm. It's time to say goodbye. Take care, everyone. Again, please don't forget to write the names of the birds that you submit to a photo contest. And please try to reduce how much you use the dryer in your household.